da, da. Well, we all know Steve. He's such a kidder. Let's, I guess, save? I'm making choices for that aesthetic quality. Back out the door, and I... This is a great school, by the way. Only the best teach here. You guys will believe that, right? So that's just that classroom. The whole wall represents that, so... I'm not your puppet. Anyways, let's check out one of these two. I can examine the fire thing, but I guess I just saved my game. I can do that. Principal Harrell will not let you use the fire alarm. Can I punch the shit out of him? And then do it? I'm gonna punch him and then I'm gonna set off the fire alarm and see if it works out okay. <laughs> Small sticker on the glass reads, Sorry for the delay on making this alarm active, big guy. Sparky. I think I'm going to jail. Door is locked. Okay, did I have anything to make it work? Can I bang with a goddamn shovel? Damn it. Damn it. Well, that didn't work. I'm gonna live my game because I know I'm going to jail. That's that quality. Let's go back on out and continue exploring the rest of the city, which is full of just color quirky people. <laughs> Next day. Gwen Memorial School, we only have a few more places to visit, though. Next up is the meat plant. I guess that's where my dad works, and where eventually I'll work. Maybe I'll find the key to his room in here. I'm not gonna examine this with or anything. Is that cat? Eating blood? And the tracks. Well, I'm definitely trying. Bloody tire tracks. And the building, a red brick building with a horrible stench coming from within. And guess what? This is right next to the school, even. Got all those cats having a good time. Yes, I'll enter, because I kind of half own the place. My dad does, at the very least. Talk to Pat O'Reilly. In a moment, whatever's in these barrels smells extremely bad. Well, it's a meat processing plant. What do you think it is? Oh, there's a dead cat, and then this cat's kind of pawing at the dead cat's in there. It's... This used to be a kitty cat. And the carcasses. The carcasses of several small animals. Well, it's got that red meat there. Examine the meat. Freshly cut meat. Which we can pick up. Steve, how's your father? Is he better? Uh, about the same, I guess. He's been away from work for weeks, and when I call your house, your mother won't let me talk to him. I haven't seen him either. This is a fine kettle of fish, I must say. Though I am glad to see you taking an interest in the business in your dad's absence. Who are you? Aw, oh, Steve, I didn't want to believe that amnesia hokum. Now you're saying you don't remember your pal Pat O'Reilly? Let's talk. A few key points I'm going to make. So we're going to talk about family business, cats, dads, illness, amnesia. Okay, let's go from there. Family business. You may come to realize that this business is not for everybody. Just ask your poor, ill dad. It takes dedication and a strong stomach. A lot of times when I'm finished scrubbing up and digging the bits of intestine out from my fingernails, I must confess, I don't have much appetite for red meat. But red meat is one of the principal food groups, and you've got to have it. So when you can do this all day and help yourself to a juicy red steak afterwards, then by golly, you can call yourself a butcher. Of course, amnesia would certainly help that, wouldn't it? What exactly is wrong with your dad? I don't know. I wouldn't worry about it too much, Steve. You should be thinking about running the family business one day. That, getting into the lodge. Come to think of it, I don't see any cattle around here. Where do you keep the animals? <laughs> 
does it matter? The end product is all the customer cares about, Steve. And we only carry the finest meat, only the juiciest cuts. Once you take over the business, you'll realize the importance of maintaining quality while cutting costs. We know what we're doing here, Steve. If we didn't, would the Lodge use us to cater their affairs? Your father's very particular about the profit, Steve. No freebies for anyone. But seeing how you're his son, if you'll bring written permission from your father, I'll give you the meat. There are certain tricks of the trade, Steve. Once your dad gets better and you start working in here cutting up the meat, you'll be privy to them. There's always cheaper, better ways to do things, if you're creative. You may come to realize that this business is not for everybody. Just ask your poor, ill dad. It takes dedication and a strong stomach. A lot of times when I'm finished scrubbing up and digging the bits of intestine out from my... I must confess I... But red meat is one of the... Pr then by golly you can call yourself a butcher. Of course amnesia would certainly help that, wouldn't it? Look, I'm not kidding about the amnesia. Why won't anyone believe me? Well, you always were such a kidder, Steve. Funny how that's beginning to sound like a stock answer. Like it was coached. You sure are acting like a kidder, son. With your dad ill, you're gonna need to start behaving like an adult, especially if you're gonna take over the family business. What's with all the cats? This a slaughterhouse or a kennel? Oh, them? They eat the scraps, that's all. Yeah, but look at... Isn't there some kind of health department that keeps tabs on these things? Are you going to work at the health department, Steve? Or here? Maybe I get sick of do-gooder busybody sucking around here all the time. A man's up to his elbows and guts all day, every day. What more do they want from him? Don't be such a stranger, Steve. And my best to your dad. Paz is on de-whiskering this chunk of meat yet. Well, okay. Out I go. Not the least bit disturbing. What are you all talking about? Oh wait, I could probably try. I haven't tried. I don't think I can because of the 2D plane, but I'm going to give it a shot. I don't think I'm going to be able to, but maybe, maybe that's good enough. Let me save my game. For the aesthetic quality. And let's see if we can punch him to death. Ah, I do. Oh, there we go. Oh, we can. Oh, jeez, another combat scenario. I'm going to die after this. I can spam the punch button better than you've ever been spammed. Let's see, he's the second guy who's attacked back. There's other punches I can do. Oh. Probably taking quite a beating here myself. It's okay. Just punch him to his heart's content. This guy's always have a lot of health. Oh, oh Jesus! My get spilt over. Let's load the game. You did. He does have a butcher knife. I imagine there's a fair amount of damage. I'll try one more time. As long as we can keep this up, I'll eventually win. Oh my god, cheap stabbing on me. Enemies that you fight always have so much health. <laughs> Look at this invigorating combat system as you just punch the shit out of him. Honestly, just the left jab is usually the best. Uh, he does take in some hits, but that's okay as long as I win in the end. 
They have a shit ton of health. Maybe I can eventually get a weapon to kill everyone in town. There we go. Now let me go to jail, right? Let's take the meat. All right, I just picked up the meat now. Who wants to bet I'm going to jail now? I'm going to jail. No, I guess he was the one. He was a guy that was okay to kill. How they go? Let's go to the missile base. Now I can take over the business once I get dad out of the way. <laughs> missile base. Does that guy have no legs or what? Well, make a save game. And let's go for general aesthetics. I should have made lieutenant in the stacks, but general sounds a bit more punny. Examine the B-17. These aircraft appear to be well maintained. Why do we need an army base with a lot of... How many nuclear missiles do we have? This base is well stocked with missiles. An electric guy chain link fence surrounds the base. And the booth. Oddly enough, the guard booth is the only building on the base. Talk to Colonel Buster Minoro, so. Oh, who goes there? Uh, they tell me my name is Steve. All oh, right, the Section 21. Keep your distance, son. I wouldn't want to have to blow your head off. That makes two of us. So you're the amnesiac, huh? Just another draft dodging ploy the way I see it. But at least you're not an alien. You see their ships every now and then. Sometimes Swell bags one in the woods. Who are you? Colonel Buster Monroe, commander of the Harvest Nuclear Missile Installation. Keeping America safe from those who would dye our flag red, white, and pink. These are nuclear missiles? Goddamn right they are. Every one of them ready to rain death on the Ruskies. All I gotta do is hit the button and blammo! The price of vodka goes through the roof. Along with the vodka. Well, I suppose you have, you know, safeguards against accidents? Safeguards? Don't be such a weak sister. There are no safeguards. This is the 50s. Then you have sole control of the, uh, missiles. That's right. Been in charge here since WW2, when I got my lower torso shot off in the war. Those panty wastes in Washington wanted to stick me behind a desk. To hell with that! They owed me! I left my legs in Dusseldorf. They owed me! Of course, they felt that... after the trauma of having to crawl from Germany to England trailing my intestines behind me, I was too emotionally unstable to continue in the military. That's why they gave me this nice cushy job and put me in charge of the nuclear missiles. There's some problems with the timeline you just suggested to me. And I think you said this is the 50s, as in you would say, this is the 2010s, we should have the technology. I think that was the sort of comment he meant. Though I'm pretty sure we are in the 50s still. Anyways, there's the button. Let me lower, lower torso, emotional instability, commie bastards, aliens, intestines, Nuclear Holocaust. All right, now I'll talk about start with the button. Why are you asking about the button, son? I'm just a little nervous about it. I mean, suppose an accident happens. Don't get your panties in a bunch, mister. The button is perfectly safe. I keep it on my person all the time. No commie bastard is getting his mitts on this button. No siree, Bob. No one initiates a nuclear holocaust in Harvest except me. Now doesn't that make you feel better? Harvest is a fine town, steeped in traditional American values. But that lodge, well, it makes me suspicious, don't mind saying it. They've got their fingers into everything around here. Like a certain red commie bastard menace which shall be nameless.
That might work out for the best, mister. I think you should join the Lodge, infiltrate it, and report back on any Red sympathizers. Your report could affect my decision on what I've got to do. Frankly, all these questions are making me a little suspicious of you. Maybe you're one of those pink-blooded Americans. Can you give me any reason why I shouldn't shoot you right now? I appreciate your honesty, comrade. That's about what I expected. All right. <laughs> oh. Uh. That. So. Who? Kurt. The. God. Well. So. That. That. When I. Those. That's why. The button. Why? I'm. I keep it on. My Tommy Bastard Harvest. Harvest. I'll oh, be sure to stay away from the Lodge. You read me wrong, mister. I think you should join the Lodge, infiltrate it, and report back on any Red sympathizers. Your report could affect my decision on what I've got to do. Tommy Bastard. Frankly, all these questions... Can you give me... You can't shoot me, I'm an American, I have rights. Rights, huh? Your average commie bastard is always only too ready to hide behind the Constitution. Real Americans waive their rights for the common good. Would you? Sure I would, for the great country of ours. Hell, our future just ran my rights. For the great country of ours, I guess, because I want to get the blowing up ending again. You talk a good game, mister. But so does your average commie bastard. The Kremlin teaches its agents to talk their way out of a scrape. What do you think about that, son? The kindness can hardly be said to hold a monopoly in intellectual discourse. I don't think about that so much like that, Colonel. I think that's the American answer. But let just only get shot up for choosing this one. Glad to hear it, son. You had me going there for a minute, asking all those questions about this base. Came this close to getting blown away. As it is, maybe you wanna get out of here before I change my mind. Go visit those Ponzi firemen. But whatever you do, stay away from that damn lodge. That's the most suspicious place in Harvest, if you ask me. Firemen. I wanted to get back into the thick of the action and out of this desk job with those firemen or a damn peculiar bunch of ladies. I thought they'd object to my lack of a lower body, but they wouldn't let me join the fire department because they said I couldn't draw naked men. Can't draw naked men? Who the hell wants to? I could draw one if I was a sick commie pervert. Look, I did this last night. What do you think? Ah, uh, arts for commies anyway, I'm gonna say that <laughs> in response. You don't say. Then you'd better go reconnoiter the fire station, mister. There's a lot of art going on over there. Determine if commie infiltration has occurred in Harvest. And report back here. Your report could make the difference in what I decide to do. About what, Colonel? Never mind that, son. It's easier if you don't know. Let's talk about lower torso. You say before you came to harvest, your lower torso was shot off in the war? That's right. I was behind enemy lines. The night was dark. The rain wet. The plastique I was supposed to rig the bridge with precariously sandwiched between my knees as I crawled in the muddy mud. The 
didn't see the Jerry taking aim at me with his machine gun until half of me was flying through the air. With a quick spray of bullets in a straight line, he'd shot my body clean in two. My lower body landed at that Jerry's feet. I can still hear him laughing as I started crawling in the general direction of England, calling behind me in broken English, my friend, where is your legs? Looky, what have we here? Some legs? Hey, did they never lose some legs? I'll never forget looking back over my shoulder and seeing that crowd doing the can-can with my legs. Still a few weeks later, with only my compass and a pair of nylons, I made it back to safety. Now the Krauts are our friends and the commie bastards are our enemies. But even so, there's at least one crowd out there that I'll never invite over to Sunday dinner.